Hello, everybody, and welcome to another very special almost summer episode of Ignite Radio Live over the five mighty stations of Annunciation Radio. The theme for tonight is really from Joel 2.28. God is saying he's going to pour out his spirit on his people, and he's saying your sons and daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams. Don't stop to dream. Dare to dream. Dare to be open to God's dreams alive in our hearts. Regardless of what he has done in your life, he wants to do so much more. He wants to bless us. But let's not forget for the purpose, to be blessers. He wants to bless us to be blessers. I want to start by just asking the question, when is the last time with any sort of friend raiser, fundraiser, you were offered money? Instead of inviting you to come to the table and to donate to a great cause, which we've all done and we think is great, when's the last time somebody said, you know, I want you to be part of something big, something that's going to make a huge difference for the kingdom. But guess what? As part of this, you're going to discover financial resources that you didn't know that you had. Now, through the duration of tonight, we're going to hear, we're going to talk about this with my friend Alfred Leopold. By the way, welcome, Alfred. It's so I'm so delighted to have you with us tonight. Well, I'm thrilled and certainly honored. Uh, I I love what you're doing, Greg, and uh, and I'm 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 just uh, really I feel blessed to be able to be any part of this because obviously you know that I support uh, what you're doing and I hope it it flourishes and grows, you know, really all around the world. Frankly, mm. as far as I'm concerned. Thank you, and uh, you know, so I'm I'm happy to be here. Delighted you're here. And we're going to Dreamcast tonight, Alfred. You and I are going to be part of this. And in a moment, we're going to get into your backstory because it's a big part of it. God uh, moves through our story. He moves through our brokenness. He moves through the Paschal mystery, right? We're in Easter. Happy Easter, everybody. God is risen. He is powerful. And he's pouring forth his spirit in these days. And those of us who are older maybe have a tendency to hang our hook on broken moments of our lives and get stuck there. Right now, we proclaim a moment of freedom. We proclaim a a fresh moment of new anointing in your life. All of us have experienced challenges and struggles, marriages, families, whatever your circumstances are. You don't get to be in your 40s, 50s, 60s and not experience that. And unfortunately, younger and younger today, God wants to proclaim a new moment of freshness, a new opportunity. So I said, Joel 228, he wants us to have dreams. I'm just going to throw out there right at at the front end here that uh, my dream, our dream, is to have a place in every major community throughout the world, but I'll say United States, and beginning here in Toledo, Ohio, a place where you can go to experience God's love that isn't a church. Now, we love the church. We want to be anchored in the sacraments, but as we know, only 14% of all professing Catholics are going to church. So there needs to be places and contexts where people are coming to just experience him alive in relationship. And so we've been dreaming about a coffee house that feels like your living room, right? It's warm, it's welcoming, there's a fireplace there. Um, And you gather, you can invite friends and family in a place where, yes, whether you're agnostic, atheist, fundamentalist, Buddhist, Kremlin, Hobbit, whatever you are, every human yearns for meaningful connection. And that's what we think a coffee house can do. So we call it the living room. We're going to call it the living room. We're already going to speak life into this place. So it's a place where people can come, where you can invite those friends who maybe are away from the faith just to kind of have an atmosphere of an encounter simultaneously to be a headquarters for our movement. I love my family.us where marriages and families, men meet, women meet in the off hours of this coffee house. So uh, as a starter, the price tag is really, we've done a lot of research into this, a lot of analysis with business leaders who are with us on this. It's going to cost a million dollars for the first instance, and it's going to be a nonprofit endeavor. So a few weeks ago, my beloved friend here, Alfred, whom I've known for over three decades, but he said, I've got a great idea. Something is happening. God has put something in front of me with great connections, legal, legit, ethical, and opportunity to really drive dreams, to drive missions. And he said, I've been thinking of you. I've been thinking of your mission and this idea, and I want to help you do it. So, Alfred, before we get into the story, just so right out there, by the way, I want to direct folks to kingdombuilderproject.com, kingdombuilderproject.com. We're going to have a very short 15-minute intro on that this Friday from 12.05 to 1220. But you can find out more at Kingdom Builder Project. So, Alfred, just give us a snapshot. We're going to come back to this later, but give us a snapshot of this opportunity that we have, particularly to business leaders and owners. You know, what we've discovered is, you know, there's been a lot of COVID relief. And, of course, a lot of people have suffered because of COVID. A lot of mm-hmm. people got... 
PPP, and like some of them got these EIDL loans. What is that? If you could break that down in short form, we'll get into it more later. But these acronyms, for those who are unfamiliar with those terms. Sure. The Paycheck Paycheck Protection Program and the EIDL, you know, is the emergency, you know, relief, essentially, uh, legislation that, uh, that basically uh, gave people either uh, loans, forgivable loans, or, or, or just um, with the EIDL, what they did was they basically gave people two years with no payments at about three and a half percent interest really really good stuff mm-hmm. it's a it's a was a great way to inject some uh some funds into the, the hands of uh, small business owners and you know uh, what they what they discovered was that was good and that, that was especially for back then when people really needed it especially in 2020 maybe even part of 2021 but um what they discovered was that they needed more and of course, you know, you and I can kind of argue whether or not we think the government should be giving away trillions of dollars or billions mm. of dollars on what they do. But the mm-hmm. fact of the matter is, uh, the money is there. And the interesting thing about about this, you know, it's uh, in its final form, uh, it was called uh, employee retention credit. So ERC is is what it's called. But it, what it really is, it's is it's a payroll tax refund. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now it went through six uh, different variations and with the final uh, piece of legislation and the first five uh, a lot of businesses didn't qualify matter of fact i think the majority did not Mm. but they finally got to the sixth one they said well why are we doing this if people can't qualify i mean that doesn't make any sense so fortunately you know uh groups that um that had not qualified now do qualify for example um if you got ppp you didn't qualify now you do um if you were an essential business you didn't qualify now you do uh so there's a lot of confusion about it. And frankly, a lot of CPAs, um, you know, they don't really want to t- touch this uh, with a 10 foot pole if they, if they can help it. Um, partly because it's not just not in their wheelhouse <clears throat> and partly because there are, are other ways to do it. We've got uh, probably over a hundred CPAs that refer business to us, to the company. Mm-hmm. It's uh, LG Logistics. So the interesting thing about LG Logistics and LG resources is that, you know, when they were approached about this, they said, look, we don't qualify. You know, we're a payroll company. We know this is a payroll tax. We we don't qualify. So they have over a little over 700 employees and they, and this, you know, this company said, well, you know, we think you probably do qualify. You you, you might be surprised. So, so they went ahead and went through the process. It turns out that they actually did qualify and they got over $11 million. That was the refund, their refund. Amazing. So if you can take that down and you do it on a, on a, on a micro scale, you know, whether you have one employee, uh, or, or you have a thousand employees, uh, there's a chance that you might qualify. So why not have a free peak under the hood, as you, you like, like to say, as I sometimes like to say, Greg, um, you know, and, uh, and see whether or not you have some money coming, you can get up to $26,000 for each employee that you had in 2020 and 2021. Um, Wow. And, uh, you know, let me I pause think, you I, on that point. Just business yeah. leaders, don't let this escape you. Many have missed the opportunity to get up to $26,000 per employee. What could you do with those kind of resources for the kingdom? Continue. Absolutely. So, you know, obviously this company, they got about an average of right just under $15,000 for each employee that, that they had. That's how they got up to that 11 million plus figure, right? Um, and so, you know, whether you're a, a church or, or, you know, there are a lot of churches, a lot of nonprofits that have employees, right? So you yep. got two, three, four, five employees. You got the opportunity to maybe get that that average there, 13, 14, 15, 18,000 or whatever it might be. Um, you know, some businesses can get excess of 20,000, but I think it's more right right around in that average. This is a, a non-taxable uh, uh, event. In other words, you don't get taxed on this money. You, there's no restrictions on this money. You can give it all the way to charity if you want You want to. Um, the fact is that, you know, what we usually are telling people, especially nonprofits, is look, you know, we go, we talk to maybe some of your board members, uh, some of your uh, board of directors, board of advisors, might be a parish council, or even people, and for example, churches, you know, they, a lot of churches have business owners, maybe 20, 30, 50, 100 business owners or more can reach out to them and say, hey, just in case you, you, you know, 
you haven't gotten this, um, if you have got, not gotten your payroll tax refund for 2020 or 2021, please let us know and, and you know let's crunch the numbers and see if we can get some money back in your pocket. And if you choose to at the t- at the time, by the time you get it, which right now it's about a you know five or six month process for them to get that money back into their hands from the government. It used to be, you know, two or three months, and it was three or four months, and it's got, just gotten a little bit longer. But thousands of businesses have gotten this company i'm working with they've processed over half a billion dollars wow in refunds in the past nine months and over the next three months they're going to process another half a billion dollars that's how how quickly this thing is you know ramping up for them so you know once they get those funds if they wanted to uh and then decide to give back a portion could be five percent ten percent twenty percent or whatever they wish you know to the to the charity that they're involved with um that's just a way uh for you and and other charities uh, to be able to raise those kinds of funds. So thank you for that, Alfred. So folks, you're tuned into Ignite Radio Live. We're inviting you to dare to dream, dream big dreams. And this is not prosperity gospel stuff we're talking about, but to be a sacramental people means that God enters the world through flesh and blood. And we need to prayerfully discern the resources that he's given us. We're going to have an episode again coming up soon where with Walt Erickson, Rich Cronin, and Drew Blazik, we're going to talk again about the economy because we are facing some uncertainty, shall we say. We have been for two years. We're going to talk about those factors, but we've got to be wise and savvy about the matters of this earth. As Jesus said, those of this age are, are smarter, are savvier than those of the kingdom. There's, a, there's an importance to be savvy about the resources we have. And again, we emphasize blessed to be blessed. In our case, by us directing you to Alfred, and in a second, Alfred, I'm going to ask you to give us and throughout um, contact information, by you even checking with Alfred and making the connection and having them do a free look under the hood of your company, business, organization, those resources are going to bless you. And we're hoping again that you prayerfully consider, wow, I made X amount of money I didn't know I had, and we're going to help this living room project, nonprofit effort to really see kingdom building in communities throughout the country, particularly beginning in this Toledo area. Alfred, what's a contact, easy contact information for anybody who's interested in this, who can't make our meeting on Friday, which I direct you again to Kingdom Builder, singular, kingdombuilderproject.com. Obviously, the easiest way is to send me a text message. And I tell people, um, I'm all. I want to have a conversation, but the problem is I'm probably on the phone when you try mm. to call me. So better, better to text me and just introduce yourself, um, or email me. So it's my my phone number is four zero seven three seven six three seven six seven, and of course you can email me at business helpers consulting group at gmail dot com. Uh, business helpers consulting group at gmail.com of course you can find me on linkedin as well excellent so folks i'm going to throw that down i'm going to include that at our website so you can easily see these modes of contact for alfred the one-stop place maybe to make it easy kingdom builder project Dot com and I will have that contact information. All right, so with that as a stage, and if you will, a practical human sacramental means of res- discovering resources that we could be blessed blessers and hoping that um, you're all open to that, let's now go back a little bit because God generally weaves in blessings in our story. And I mean a Paschal sense that all of us right now, this is relevant. Each of us are going through some phase of this life death, resurrection, and Pentecost. It's the pattern of Christ. It's the pattern of every story ever told, every movie that we've ever seen. These movements of the protagonist begin somewhere. They go through a crucible. That's the death. They come out the other end, knowing their life more fully, their identity, which informs their mission, Pentecost. So, Alfred, those listening to our program hear us often proclaim Revelations 12, 11, we see the enemy quite active in the world around us. And we have clear evidence, or I should say direction, on how to conquer the enemy in Revelations 12, 11. They defeated the enemy by the blood of the Lamb, the Holy Mass, Christ's blood and water poured out for the salvation of the world that puts Satan in his cage if we choose to cooperate. The blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And we emphasize that all who are listening, you have a testimony. It may not be this huge, you know, New York Times bestseller book, But all of us have a testimony and it's ever unveiling and we always need to be ready to communicate what God is doing in our lives. If somebody asked you right now, a stranger, you know, why do you believe? What's evidence for your belief in this God or this faith? You should have a story on hand to demonstrate more than just quoted scripture, if you will. That's all good. But a testimony that makes alive God's 
active presence in your life. So we're asking Alfred, our friend here, we're going to back up right now. And Alfred, tell us a little bit about your story. Let's go back to little Alfred in Erie, Pennsylvania, and share with us a little bit of your story, because I think it's rather remarkable. Well, uh, I, I, I do appreciate that, uh, Greg. And I will say, you know, I, I certainly have been blessed throughout my, my life in many, many ways. You know, I grew up in a family, like you said, in Erie, Pennsylvania. You know, I was baptized by a future bishop, and I was named after that priest. Mm. Very, it's kind of unusual. I don't think I knew that. That, uh, that was my, so I'm Alfred Michael Leopold, uh, and, uh, you know, the uh, the priest that baptized me um, must have been close to the family at the time, and um, and that's what they decided to name me. And, and so uh, I was one of ultimately, um, uh, well, six boys we we I, my we did have a miscarriage along the way. We might have had a sister, but we actually ended up uh, essentially adopting two other boys. So we essentially grew up with eight boys in my family. Mm. Uh, my oldest brother went on to become a priest of the diocese of Erie, um, and uh, was a great example, you know, for many of us. Uh, uh, I was very involved in uh, youth uh, work, you know, uh, back when I was in high school. Uh, I was involved in an organization called Young People Who Care, believe it or not. And so we did a lot of outreach and different things. And uh, I went, I was fortunate enough to go to Catholic grade school, Catholic high school, uh, Catholic college. You know, not everybody can do that. Now, I will say I paid for my college. Mm-hmm. My, you know, my parents, they had eight boys. They were not going to be paying for people's colleges. You know what I mean? So so we, if I wanted to go to college, I had to go to college. Now, they let me stay at home. Fortunately, it was right, right there. It's the diocesan college there in Erie, Gannon, Gannon University. Um, it was Gannon College at the time, mm-hmm. and uh, and I did uh, go on to do uh, a lot of. Uh, well, I, I decided to study theology and social work as my concentration. I wanted to be a youth minister, mm-hmm. you know, back back in that day, and um, and I did a lot of music ministry at the time, um, and uh, you know, I, I met my future wife uh, there during she she saw uh, saw me at. Uh, leading music at one of the um, at masses. And, you know, we kind of went went on from there. Now, we, we dated for a summer, lost track of each other, got back together. It's kind of kind of a long story. I remember the days. But, uh, 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 but the fact is that, um, you know, one thing, one thing led to another. My, my, uh, we, my, we did lose my oldest brother. He was on his way to say mass on the Feast of the Epiphany and uh, the icy roads of Pennsylvania. You know, he, he was notoriously late for mass because he loved talking with people. You know, like me and you, Greg, we love talking. <laughs> um, yeah. But but the fact is that uh, uh, you know um, he they found him on the side of the road, mm. and uh, you know at the age of thirty four, mm. the good Lord uh, took him home. Uh, but he did a lot of work while he was here, and he really mm. did a lot of good things as a priest. Eleven years of priest huh? and a good name. Um, yes, uh, a good name, uh, Father Gregory Leopold. And matter of fact, when my when my parents retired down to Florida, they donated. Our, our homestead to the diocese and it's now the Father Gregory Leopold Center for Renewal up there in Erie. And uh, so I was the first son to follow them down to Florida um, and uh, and frankly um, you know I I, uh, I was down there and you know living a good single life at the time at least I thought and but you know I really came back and, and kind of discovered the church at that time and really discovered uh, daily mass even at that mm-hmm. time. Um, through EWTN, hmm. believe it or not, my 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 mom was crazy about uh, EWTN and Mother Angelica and a lot of the uh, programs on there, and um, you know Father Ken Roberts and a lot of other others that uh, kind of. Can I you know, pause really you a drew. second, just for clarity? Yeah. So I knew you in the '80s, the late '80s. I was working for Human Life International, and Correct. was leading. Uh, large conferences, one of which was in the United States, and you were representing Steubenville at that point. But just for clarity, you've already intimated this. You came from a, a family deeply devout, solid Catholic in terms of religious practice. They definitely got religion and ritual and faith. And um, so that was part of the fabric as best as parents can in that age, which is remarkable, truthfully. So you have a larger family, a brother who is a priest, um, tragic circumstances. How old were you at the point you're speaking of now where I, th- I think you're leading us into maybe a first moment of encounter, choosing it for yourself? How old were you? What was going on in your life? So I was I was uh, in my twenties, probably mid mid to, to going on late twenties. Um, obviously, I had a faith 
life and was and it was important to me even in, even through high school was active with different things but you know i don't was just not really taking it as seriously as a as a high school or even a college student uh, should but you know even during college uh, greg you know i used to lead a um, uh, a little uh, prayer uh, uh, group uh, called hosea and uh, we would get together and we, we would pray for our, our uh, you know, the, in our, our own intentions and for the intentions of the church, you know, so there was always that, that thread weaving, you know, through my life. And, uh, you know, at times I needed to be brought back uh, to reality. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. But, but the fact is that, um, you know, I got to a point where, uh, frankly, I was pretty successful at what I was doing down there I was working with Marriott, their marketing you know, department. Um, and, um, I had, uh, worked for a while as a, as a bellman at their, the biggest hotel there in, in Florida, frankly. And, uh, uh, you know, so a lot of good things had in that area, but I really felt like God was calling me to say, Hey, yeah, you know, the world will acknowledge your talents and gifts. Are you, are you willing to put them at my disposal? And this, this was even back in when I was in my uh, late twenties. And, you know, interestingly enough, I kind of, I, I, I left, I went to EWTN. They actually offered me a job to, as a marketing, uh, regional marketing mm. director. Um, uh, and then I went up to Steubenville uh, because I was thinking about maybe getting my master's degree in theology and Christian ministry. Um, and they actually offered me, once again, an internship where I could get free tuition. But the third place I, I wanted to go to was out to California to meet with a gentleman by the name of Paul Lauer. So you and I <laughs> don't know Paul. Yes. And uh, Who's um, Paul Lauer? So just for our audience, those who may be our age and familiar with some of his connect points. Sure. So so Paul uh, started uh, a Catholic youth magazine uh, back in the day. It was originally called Veritas. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we switched the name over to You, You Magazine mm -hmm. at the time. You know, Paul has gone on to work with Mel Gibson, work with Lion Witch in the Wardrobe, some yep. other other uh, you know movies and programs and, and different things. Um, but you know, I met with Paul, and frankly, you know, I I really got the culture. I really got what he was buying into uh, there. I kind of bought into it myself and uh, became the marketing and promotions manager. You know, and uh, uh, and so I decided to, to grab that that job and do that. And so what happened was, interestingly enough. Um, you know, I met a few people when I was up in Steubenville and obviously they were disappointed I didn't take the intern internship, but, you know, I ended up going to Steubenville and spending almost the, most of the summer there because, you know, they have some dynamic, uh, youth conferences and other conferences all summer long there in, in Steubenville. And, uh, so I was like just giving away the magazine right mm. up there. So I just spent the better part of the summer there, just giving the way away the magazines at the, at these conferences and getting to know a lot of people. Um, and, uh, uh, and then I ended up, you know, of course, back, um, in, uh, California is uh, down in uh, Los Angeles area, uh, you know, back with Paul after that summer there. And I, I ended up going, you know, kind of traveling around promoting the magazine. Um, and I ended up in Seattle at the national, uh, their, their, their national Catholic youth conference there in Seattle for the diocese of, of Seattle. And believe it or not, I, I had met Tim Scanlon who is, was the uh, nephew of Father Mike Scanlon, um, uh, who many people know, um, when I was at Steubenville. And uh, so we both ended up in, in uh, uh, Seattle. He had taken the internship job that I turned down, <laughs> which was crazy. Um, it's awesome. And, uh, and so he was promoting the university and I was promoting the magazine. And he said to me, Alfred, you know, I'm getting married here in a few weeks. You should come out to the wedding. And I said, Tim, that sounds like a, a great idea. And if I can figure it out, I'm going to be there because, you know, uh, I thought, you know, maybe I'll just go do a little mini retreat in, in Steubenville. So, so I actually ended up deciding to do that before I headed down to Orlando to spend a little time with my, my parents. And, uh, while I was there, um, they, they, uh, I had found out that I'd been recommended, um, uh, to take over an admissions position there. Uh, as an employee of the university. And I said, well, what in the world? How, how did that happen? Well, the gal that had interviewed me, um, she was nine months pregnant and she was leaving. And she, she's like, and so I found out from the director of admissions that she, she had recommended me for the position because uh, also, of course, this was part of my journey, but I speak Spanish. I, I spent about a year in, in Mexico teaching English as a second language. Muy bien. You know, just, just prior, just prior, you know, and um, 
So interestingly enough, I, I ultimately said, well, listen, I'm going to pray about it and we'll see when would I have to be there. And they said, well, you have to be here pretty quickly. And, you know, and so I, I, I prayed about it and I called them and said, look, I, I can't do it. I mean, it's too fast, too close, too much short notice, but I'm going to pray you get the right person. And so then when I got out to California after my time in, in Florida, um, you know, I told Paul about it and Paul said, well, why didn't you take the job? I'm like, Paul, what do you mean? I'm working for you. <laughs> He's like, well, listen, you could have been my inside man over there. Uh. <laughs> you know? And so I said, well, listen, I'll, I'm, I'm going to call them and I'll, I'll just find out. But I said, they probably, you know, they probably hired somebody. Well, I called, talked to Ray McFillin, uh, the director of admissions at the time. And he said, I said, did you fill that position? Because I was praying that you got the right person. He said, Alfred, we didn't fill it because we were torn. We really wanted you. Um, and the other group wanted some of the other candidates and, you know, we just ended up not filling it. I said, well, if I was interested, serious about it, what, what would it take? He said, Alfred, if you can be here on the 14th of January, the position is yours. Wow. So that talk about God's, you know, hand in that whole thing. So I was there, I was almost there, there for about eight and a half years, almost nine years. I was, I, I ran the, uh, first I did international admissions and, and, uh, you know, I had the Southeast as well. Then they handed me the Austrian program. So the Austrian program, which was literally, mm. I didn't know this, and no one, very, very few people knew this, that they were going to shut this down. Mm. So they started this Austrian program, and it just wasn't going well. They were, they were going, it was really going to have to shut down because they just didn't get enough students signing up. So they gave it to me. I was a single guy, and they said, Alfred, we hope you can devote a lot of time and energy to this. I became the Austrian uh, program coordinator, and. Um, and I, what I discovered was the reason that the, the students weren't buying into it is because the faculty wasn't buying into it. Um, so, which was a problem, of course, you know, so uh, because they're, they're I, I asked these students, why aren't you going to Austria? Well, my advisor told me it, it doesn't fit into the program, right? It, it just didn't fit. So I went to the dean of faculty. For, fortunately, I reported directly to him and I said, hey, here's your problem right here. Uh, you know, you're, you're, you're not only do you, your, you know, department heads not be buy into this but all the faculty members don't buy into it maybe you might have a couple that buy into it but most of them don't and that's why you can't get students so so we had to turn that whole thing around i had to go meet with all of them he had to meet with them we met with the department heads but eventually you know i spent a ton of time in the cafeteria talking to students about getting to austria and uh and we were able to get enough students there in the spring to to revive the program and, and get it going and by the time i left you know eight years later it was one of the top catholic study abroad programs in the country and I had recruited the, the the next three classes before I left left the building. And um, now at that time, during that time, I actually was on the board of directors of, uh, I, I was asked to join the board of directors of a local crisis pregnancy center. Um, mm -hmm. I was also the executive director of the Heart of the Church Foundation. We had the Language and Catechetical Institute over there in Austria. Um, and we were raising, raising funds for. Um, and uh, I eventually started my own uh, you know, uh, foundation as well, the Veritas Foundation, mm -hmm. believe it or not. So, um, and uh, what we did was we actually helped students that were coming out of university with student debt. We would pay their their debt off so that mm -hmm. they could enter religious life or awesome. uh, or the priesthood. Um, so then, uh, uh, you know, then I left. We left Steubenville. Ended up down in Orlando. My dad's health was, you know, failing a little bit. Um, and then, you know, from there, of course, there's a whole other journey. Of course, I got married, you know, uh, in Steubenville there. And, you know, we had uh, four ki four children. Um, and by the time we got down to Orlando, of course, there were a lot of different things. We were very heavily involved in real estate. Um, we ended up ha mis having a miscarriage with mm -hmm. our fifth child. And, uh, you know, it was difficult, very difficult for my wife at the time. And, um, you know, uh, among other things, of course, uh, uh, we'll talk about this, you know, um, I've struggled with, you know, lust and, mm -hmm. and these kinds of things over the years, uh, as many men do. Um, uh, but, you know, um, I, I continue to, to see God's grace in the whole the, the whole journey here. Let me but pause you a second. Let me pause yeah, if you don't ahead. mind. So, folks, tuning into Ignite Real Live, blessed to have Alfred Leopold with us, a beloved brother in Christ. Uh, I was in his wedding. He was in mine decades ago. And blessed to cross paths, in particular, when he was working for Steubenville, Human Life International. And then, if some of you know my story, I found myself at Steubenville post-college, traveling around the country and evangelizing in a position he was in. He was uh, elevated in that context to run the 
the, uh, the Austrian program. Many of uh, those who are familiar with Steubenville have been profoundly blessed by that. Many awesome marriages have come out of that. Alfred, all along, of course, discerning uh, married life and married as he's sharing with us here and four children. And I just want to shift a bit of the, the, um, the, if you will, the awareness here of where we're maybe going as you share, because I think many marriages right now, it's a season of people about ready to get married and they're getting engaged and all that sort of thing. So big questions. Why are so many couples maybe not getting married or getting in godly marriages or who do get married are really, they're, they're weeds there. There's toxicity there. They may even be going to Mass, as you were. They may even be praying the rosary, yep. as were you. So I, I don't want to miss the opportunity to frame this correctly. Just give us some insight there, speaking to maybe younger families struggling with this, married couples, people going into this, so that maybe we can allay some of that. Absolutely. Well, here's what I'll tell you. You know, we were going to daily Mass. I was going to daily Mass before I got married. And... Um, we were going to daily mass to practically the whole time there. We were in Subinville and even when we moved to California and even back down to, to Florida. Um, what I will say is, you know, uh, obviously there, there are many, many things, you know, the loss of a, a, of a child, which we experienced, we had a very, very, you know, we had an economic downturn with real estate, which I was heavily involved with. So there are a lot of different factors uh, in, involved there. But, you know, what, what I tell men, when I get a chance to, and men's groups, when I get a chance to, is, you know, one of the main things is you have to, you do have to be focused on, you know, daily, uh, you know, wanting to do the will of God and being willing to sacrifice, you know, what you want for uh, certainly your spouse, right? And you have to be in touch on a daily basis with what's important to your wife, right? And if you, if you, if you get out of sync and you don't, if you're not uh, really, you know, focused in on that, uh, what's important to your wife? What's obviously what's important to God? What's our, God's will for our, our lives as as married couples? You know, and and the other thing is you have to be deeply committed from the beginning, um, come thick or thin, you know, to covenantal marriage. And you know whether or not, you know, uh, my wife and I had a covenantal marriage. Um, really, I, I had to ultimately leave that in, in, in mm. the, the hands of the church. You know, we eventually got divorced, uh, not of my own, you know, desire and uh, annul, annulment there. Uh, but, you know, the good good news is that, you know, throughout it, I held on to my faith and my children saw that. And, you know, the thing that I really feel as a blessing is bo- both for, you know, my, my former wife and myself, our, our faith is important to us. And they and and the children have certainly seen this, and they love the sacraments. You know, they're into their twenties. They love the sacraments. They love the Lord. I can't ask for any more than that. Mm. You know, uh, you know, Mother Angelica came from a, a broken home as well. So there are some many, many, many good things that can come out of this. You are giving witness to the resurrection part of the Paschal mystery. Not that there aren't still struggles, but there were some dark moments. And um, real challenges, bitterness, all of that range of emotions. So I don't know if you could just, some who are dealing with some of those struggles, number one, I think you're saying persevere in the marriage. Absolutely. Rely on the sacramental yeah. grace on your part. Realize that that the, sometimes the most powerful thing we can do for others is seek holiness. And, and you are deeply repentant and of your own part in that. And I, I know that I want to just punctuate that. But I think for many who are in the midst of it, that, you know, give maybe a word of encouragement to those who might be in the midst of that and struggling with bitterness and resentment. Maybe they're already divorced and separated, but just a word of encouragement and healing to them because you're giving witness that God does heal. Absolutely. And here's what I'm going to say. You know, we, 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 many of us throughout our lives have prayed the Our Father, right? Well, there's a very mm-hmm. important part there in the Our Father, many, many important parts, but one of them is, you know, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who mm-hmm. trespass against us. But, you know, the fact is that we need to learn to forgive ourselves and forgive others, including our, our spouses. We, we've got to do that on a daily basis because that's what we're called to do. We're called to love, right? We are called to love as Christ loves. Look at the uh, gospel from yesterday. This is how uh, that we will you know, know uh, that we are Christians, right? That mm. we love one another as Christ has loved us, right? That's what we're called to do you know, on a daily basis. And um, so, you know, that's what I would say is, look, focus on, you know, have that prayer life 
you know, with your spouse. Um, but really, you have to be in tune uh, and make sure that you're in tune with what each, you know, what your spouse really desires. You know, you have to be in tune with that. Obviously, we hope that all of that comes uh, to be in tune with uh, the will of God. Uh, but that's the thing that you really, if you, you know, if you're in tune with that, you know how what they say, happy, happy wife, happy, happy life, right? But, you know, it's the same thing even for uh, for women, you know, the same, we have to be in tune with one another. Uh, and, uh, and, and that's really going to get there through, through having a, a really good, deep prayer life and a real commitment to that covenantal marriage. Great word, Alfred. Marriage, the context for making us saints, it means that we're going to face the crucible. We're in the crucible on this side of things and God allows it. Why? So we can be like Christ. Ephesians 5, die to ourselves. And gosh, it's a challenge sometimes, isn't it? When you have every reason to think that you have right to say this or do this, but magnanimity to go above and beyond. I think that's the wisdom you're exhibiting in many of us at this age is we can be like Christ. We can lay down our lives and suffer for the very ones causing it. Think about that, brothers and sisters. What if we could do that? If we could be suffering for the very ones who cause it. It's easy, as we hear in the Gospels, to suffer for one for whom good feelings are flowing. But sometimes it's in our families it's most difficult. Okay, let's move on. Yeah, and I will say just the last thing. You know, we suffer, right? That was a very difficult time, and it mm-hmm. has been. We all suffer. Mm-hmm. But, get, but you know, uh, we get to identify in a very, very small way with Jesus' suffering, right? Amen. So, so if we can say, wow, you know, if we can really offer this up and say, as we suffer throughout our lives, we have a very, very small window, tiny, tiny window into the sufferings of Christ, which he did for, for us, uh, you know, uh, through his passion and his uh, um, crucifixion. Amen. So, so I do. I, I do want to mention here, and I want to kind of turn. You know, almost four years ago, I suffered what they call mm-hmm. the the widowmaker heart attack. So this summer is going to be my fourth anniversary of my my new life, huh? because the fact of the matter is that um, the reason I'm here and we're having a conversation is because is because God uh, wa- has more work for me to do, right? And uh, and so. You know, I was able to call uh, an ambulance and get down to the foot of my driveway and they were able to do an emergency procedure that, you know, obviously saved my life. Um, of course, I was praying through the whole experience, you know, and mostly just saying Jesus over and over and <laughs> just saying the name of Jesus over and over. Um, so, you know, God's got a lot more work for me to do, uh, obviously. Uh, and uh, it also needs means that I need to be more focused than ever on mm-hmm. trying to do God's will every day, you know? Yeah. So you'd think that I would have been good. That would have been a good enough reason to get more serious about my faith and that I would have had a quick transformation. But unfortunately, you know, that wasn't the case. Uh, it was a, a slow transformation, you know, thank God my prayer uh, life certainly uh, did increase since that time, but, you know, but slowly. Um, but, you know, I do believe that here recently, especially, you know, uh, uh, there, that there's a reason that a set of books, which I had been introduced to many decades mm. ago, back when I was involved in the pro-life movement and back, back uh, at Steubenville, um, uh, when I was uh, living there, I'd actually purchased them. Um, so they kind of resurfaced. I began to reread them. Um, I never finished all five of the volumes. Of course, I'm talking about Poem of the Man God uh, with uh, by Maria Valtorta. This is a mystic in the 40s. And, you know, mm. this is a woman that was bedridden. Uh, she hardly had an education. Um, she never got outside of Italy. So she was be able to witness uh, the lives of uh, Jesus and Mary and the apostles. And, you know, I had, uh, uh, you know, had purchased the books and, and never finished all of them. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, throughout my life, I had gone to daily mass uh, off and on, sometimes over a decade at a time. But, you know, by rediscovering the poem of the man, God, um, uh, I've also rediscovered that I really have had no excuse for not getting to daily mass, Greg. Right? I mean, I had no no excuse. We, you know, the fact is, I and and I walk. I have the I have the uh, you know the the uh, uh, benefit of being able to walk to mass. So it's good for my ec- good exercise, good for my heart, and good for my soul. You know, uh, so so I get to walk to mass almost every day, um, and you know. Uh, I, I, I actually started going uh, back to daily mass here on Valentine's Day. I've been going to daily mass ever since. I've had the, probably the best Lent and Easter I've had um, 
probably ever or in decades, certainly one of the top best uh, that I've had. Um, and, you know, uh, so coupled with almost daily reading or listening, because I can also, you can also listen to Poem of the Manga. There's a guy on YouTube that, you know, just reads it, you know, so I do that sometimes. It's really helped me to focus more and more on the reality that we have to be asking God daily to help us to do his will. I mean, that's what we have to be asking. You know, I have a prayer that I've been saying on and off for many decades, uh, which I pray when I wake up in the morning. And of course, I start off in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. And I, I just say, good morning, sweet Jesus. Good morning, blessed mother. Good morning, St. Joseph. Please help me today and always to do only the will of the Father in all things. Mm, I love that. You know, and, and I say that prayer just about every day. And, and really, we have to, we, we, we need to pray it and we need to internalize it. And, you know, throughout the day, you know, we're forgetful people by nature. You know, that's, that's, uh, I, I actually have on my phone, you know, uh, when I want to do the Angelus, you know, and mm -hmm. I, when I want to maybe, uh, if I can't say, say the mercy chaplet, at least, you know, turn my, uh, my thoughts uh, toward the merciful God, you know, um, we're put here to learn, uh, you know, to love and serve God and, to, and our neighbor and to, of course, get home. Uh, to be with God, uh, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and all of our brothers and sisters in the saints uh, forever in heaven, right? And get as many people there as we can, right? That That's, you know, so the one thing I'll say for certain about the Poem of the man, man God is that, you know, it has borne much fruit in my life. It's private revelation. So if it, it the fact is it's borne a ton of, a lot of fruit in my life and the lives of, of countless others, tens of thousands of others. Um, you know, I, I've, I've read that St. Mother Teresa used to carry it around. Uh, St. Uh, uh, Pope John Paul II used to carry it around. Uh, Padre Pio uh, actually not only recommended it, but demanded some, some of his spiritual children read it. He used to bilocate and visit with uh, Maria Val Valtorta. So, you know, obviously these are anecdotal, you know, things. There, 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 there's a, a Blessed Allegra, who is uh, on his way to canonization, wrote a book, um, The Virgin Mary in the Poem of the Man God. And uh, obviously it was uh, he was one of Pope John Paul II's favorite uh, Marian theologians, and uh, he's on his way to canonization. So he had a lot of good things to say about it. You know, it's been published. It's been it's in a lot of the libraries, Vatican libraries, and also uh, seminaries. Uh, and of course, you know, it's been allowed to be published. Uh, uh, so anyway, it's private revelation. If it helps you, great. If it doesn't, is you know, uh, it, you you'll you'll know you know by uh, by the fruit. You know, uh, so I will say that uh, uh, you know the, the fact is that. Many men have suffered, especially in the area of lust, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. So, you know, by reading and listening to the poem of the man, God, you know, I get to observe and hear the words of Jesus while reading, reading it. And of course, you know, more about the mystery of his host, most holy mother. Right. And I understand more clearly the value that Jesus places on purity and chastity. Right. And we're, we're all called to this, even in the married life. Right. Yes. Um, so that that alone has convicted me in a way that I never thought I could be convicted of. And of course, I can't say it's been completely eradicated. Uh, but, you know, uh, since then, but, you know, I, I, I have not struggled, uh, you know, in this area. It's uh, amazing because it, it's, it's just I've, it's been good for my soul and for my heart. You know, it's been been a lot of healing, you know, Alfred, so if whole, I could ask you can be summed up, by the way, in the word love. Oh, that, uh, mm. These five volumes, one word, love. Now, of course, the meaning of love makes a huge difference. Everybody uses it and how it's applied. But I want to ask you a question and, and maybe in diving into that meaning of love and how it struck you. Because, Alfred, you've been to Steubenville conferences. You sat at the feet, so to speak, of some of the, the world's most preeminent evangelists and apologists. Uh, from the Franciscan University of Steubenville. You've read books. You've been attuned to it most of your life. You know, you, you've had that exposure. You were obviously receiving the sacraments. Um, but you're describing this poem of a man God, of the man God as somewhat of a game changer. And you're speaking specifically to that it is the nature of love and purity in particular, which we all know, theology of the body, that our deepest affection is for God himself, um, that the heart of every urge, sexual urge notwithstanding, is an urge to a completion that can only be found in God. That's a pretty rich statement. I'll say it again, and it's worth repeating again and again and again. Folks, every desire we have, every urge that we have, the heart of that urge by God's design is an urge for great intimacy and completion that can only be found in him. This is as a, as a husband and a father who loves his wife deeply and is very given to matters sensual as any human person is. At some point in life, we 
c- cease being insane, trying the same things again and again, expecting a new result, and realize that God made us for himself. So I get that. But for you, Alfred, you're going to Mass. So you're, not only are you speaking of love, there's the, the practical experience participation in the intimacy of God that is the Eucharist. You go, what's different for you about the Mass? I mean, we could spend our time, people spend five, six hours of discretionary time a day with these stupid devices in our pockets. You know, what? what is it that's gotten you to go to Mass? What's it doing for you? Why are you going to Mass daily? Well, I'm going to Mass daily because I, I am able to receive my Lord uh, in the Eucharist and, and to hear the Word of God uh, every day. And, and get to really, as you go to Mass and you focus on it and you ask God to teach you, uh, and obviously it's an ultimate uh, piece, it, it's the ultimate love that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit has, has given us to even, you know, have Jesus come down and take on our flesh and our sins, right? And to then to give us his flesh in the Eucharist. It's, it's just an, it's an, it's a mystery that is so hard uh, to, for many to understand, but it's so profound and it's so important. And if we're willing to let, you know, let him enter into us and transform us and pray that that, that can happen. This is the thing that I I tell people that Greg, you know, the fact is I I want God every day. I want, want the Lord uh, to, um, to, allow me to talk to who I'm supposed to talk to today, when I'm supposed to talk with them and what I'm supposed to talk with them about. And, and what has happened has been unbelievable since then for me. Mm. I mean, both in my, my personal life, my spiritual life, uh, and, and also in my business life, uh, because what has happened, I've had people call me, I've, I've had people I've talked, haven't talked to in decades, uh, you know, I've had people call me out of the blue. I haven't talked to them in years. And one guy called me here on my birthday a couple of weeks ago. He didn't even know it was my birthday and he called me. I hadn't talked to him in three years. And, and that led to one, one, you know, from one thing to another, to another, where, where many, 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 many people are going to be blessed because this mm-hmm. is the thing I, people have to understand is, you know, when you own a business as a Catholic business owner, as a, uh, hopefully a, a Christian business owner, or even, you know, I know plenty of, you know, people of other faiths as well, Jewish and other people, you know, you, you obviously want, you, there's a reason you've got a responsibility, you know, uh, when you have a business, right? Uh, not only to your family, but to potentially your uh, employees and, and others. It has a ripple effect, you know, just like Austria, you know, uh, being able to have the, uh, what I did with Austria, the Austrian program had a ripple effect because like you said, hundreds of holy marriages came out of that. And that was something I was recently reminded of. So it's the same thing here. This has a ripple effect. And so when you, when you talk to people, um, the fact is that, that I've been given opportunities here to do things like reach out to you and others and say, hey, here's a way that can help you. And, and Greg, you and I both know that, you know, one of your board members who, by the way, we discovered he actually got the payroll tax refund for 2021, mm-hmm. right, but didn't get it for 2020. So it's a good thing that we had a conversation with him because we were able to get him, you know, uh, a, a, a pretty sizable chunk of additional uh, funds where if he hadn't gotten it, we would have gotten him pretty close to about a million dollars, you yeah. know. So so if you think about that and you think, well, listen, could he potentially, if he wants, I mean, it's up to him, of course, uh, could he potentially give you 5, 10, 20 percent of, of, of that if it had been a million dollars? What a blessing that would be. Mm-hmm. And and it certainly could have been if he hadn't already been as sharp as he is, which he's a pretty sharp guy, and gotten gotten the refund for 2021. But, you know, as you talk to, to business owners, you know, there's so many things. Over the years, of course, I've done a lot of things. You know, Greg, I work with Tony Robbins. I work with Chad Holmes. work with David Finkel. He's got a New York Times bestseller called Build a Business, Not a Job. Mm-hmm. I've done a lot of real estate uh, things over the years and things like this. But, you know, what I will tell you is that there, there, there are a lot of people out there that, you know, want to, you know, do be ethical in their business, you know, uh, proceedings and everything that they do. And it has a ripple effect, you know, uh, and, and so this is, this is what I want to do. I want to help as many nonprofits as I can, many churches as I can, uh, as many uh, Catholic business owners, 
Folks, yeah. you're tuning into Ignite Radio Live. Very blessed to have my brother Alfred Leopold with me, sharing God's journey, God's movement in his life, talking about the early years in a family in Erie, Pennsylvania, growing up Catholic, and uh, his parents uh, going down to Florida, navigating his own faith onto Steubenville and managing the Austria program, which has been a, a great catalyst for many godly marriages and vocations, for that matter, uh, to priesthood and religious life, and definitely some business endeavors, blessing many early on in nonprofit endeavors and his own business endeavors. And we began this program tonight by talking about dreams, Joel 2.28, uh, where the Father says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. And I share that as head of this movement of ours, marriage and family revival, God wants us to encounter him alive in the world. Does the world not to need to see God alive? And he's given us the means to live it out, experience it in our marriages and in our families. Homes are the place, right? John Paul II has said it's the cornerstone of civilization. The future passes by way of the family. So our dream, what's our dream? Our dream is to continue this uh, I Love My Family.us, this resource to help families live it out in their homes, but to have these li- uh, living room coffee houses, places where people can go that aren't church property, as awesome as that is, as important and sacramentally foundational as that is, a secular place on ramps and communities where people can come just to feel welcome, warm, to have a taste of things and that invite them into something deeper where men can meet, women can meet, families can meet in the off hours of the business. And uh, Alfred has introduced an opportunity here for us by way of those who are businesses, godly business businesses that want to benefit by um, discovering money that they are owed, if you will, and to f- for free, no obligation to find out what is money that perhaps many have missed. Our friend who's on our board, um, has, you know, basically very savvy with his accounting. He's had forensic ac- accountants already look under his hood, and I had him on the first conversation with Alfred to say, okay, what do you think about this? Let's vet this deal, because everything always right sounds like a come on, right? So and even though Alfred's a dear friend, I'm not savvy about these things. So Al, um, our other friend was sitting down having the conversation. He's a business owner, 40 employees. Through a couple uh, conversations, hard questions being asked, my friend said, our board member said, this is absolutely legit. My goodness, they found over $600,000 that we will be benefited with that we completely missed. And so basically, if you go to kingdombuilderproject.com, we want to bless you. Those of you who are business owners who have properties and resources, and you want to make sure that you're getting, uh, if you will, what is there, if you will, that your hard-earned money. Do you want to maximize the money that you have and you want to free look under that hood? Look at that, kingdombuilderproject.com. We're going to have a short meeting this coming Friday. And you can also find their contact information for Alfred Leopold, who can talk, who will contact him personally by way of cell is his best way. He'll get back to you. You could plug into a calendar for a longer conversation. But again, the simple question, when's the last time you went to a fundraiser and you actually got money, substantial money that you didn't even know you had. And from that, you felt, gosh, Lord, I am blessed. I want to be a blesser. And wrapping all this up again in the sense that we are called to build the kingdom. And obviously, first and foremost, that is, and Alfred gave witness to this, to respond to God's invitation to intimately know him and the mass which is that occasion to rediscover lord open our hearts and our eyes to see this tremendous unsurpassed gift that you give accessible to most of us every day so the thing about Paul and the man god you can get it at archive.org for free you can it's it's a it's a uh, sharing or people share books on there so you can share the digital version of the book it's right there for free on archive.org also if you look it up on youtube there's a gentleman that just reads it so i've been listening to it you don't have to watch him but you can listen to it on on youtube uh, and he does a pretty you know pretty decent job so any any way that and, and and the other thing is you can kind of pick the chapter you know if you just want to listen to birth of jesus you know or you want to listen to the resurrection or if you want to listen to you know uh, Mary's assumption into heaven, you know, mm-hmm. which is obviously, you know, things that we, we wouldn't normally be able to hear about, um, you know, uh, or the ascension or, or the passion. The passion is just mm. excruciating. Uh, this is detail. from the poem of the man, God, again, the private the revelation. Man. Pope Pius XII said uh, to publish it, okay? It, the second edition has been allowed to be published, okay? Uh, but, you know, some people would say, look, it's private revelation, so it's not the kind of thing that uh, it's been officially approved like uh, like Fatima, for example, or, or something like that. Mm-hmm. But the fact is it has been allowed to be promulgated and without uh, being censured 
Um, even uh, uh, Pope Benedict has written a series of, uh, you know, uh, uh, letters ab about it and things like that. So, but you can do a little bit of research on it. Uh, but, I appreciate but, that. Ultimately, I say, look, uh, if if there if you bear if it bears fruit for you, uh, then then wonderful. If 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 reading it or listening to it, you know, it doesn't speak to your heart. It, it's okay. It's not a. It's not something that. It's just private revelation. Mm -hmm. But this, we say the same thing about all the Marian apparitions, mm -hmm. uh, even Fatima and Lourdes. These are not things that you have to believe as a Catholic, mm -hmm. right? But if they help you and they and they help you to grow your faith, uh, obviously it's a it's a benefit to all of us, right? F fabulous, folks. You've been tuning to Ignite Radio Live. You can listen to all of our engaging programs. If you're asking, Lord, how are you present to us today? Are you with us? Are you working? Are you alive? We're all about giving testimony to that. We've had phenomenal guests talking about it. Blessed to have Alfred Leopold with us tonight, but you can hear those at IgniteRadioLive.com. A little bit of a commercial. We are not simply a digital world, especially with this metaverse thing, which can do a lot of good. It can also, as we know, with the phones and those sorts of things, it can also do a lot of bad. It depends upon the heart of those using it. But we are about the premier form of connection that is physical personal presence are we are, are we not all yearning for personal presence dare i say real presence certainly the eucharist at the very heart of it the source and summit uh, but also our belief and beverage nights are an on-ramp an opportunity for everybody in our community we'd like to see again this would be connected to this dream of ours for this living room that it would be the location for now though we're very blessed that rich and connie cronin lend us their gmc of perrysburg the showroom it's a great place every th uh, the, the First, the third Thursday of every month, um, where we hear phenomenal speakers. We have beverages, and it's a great place of community. You can find out more about that and register. The next one coming up this Thursday, massimpact.us, massimpact.us forward slash BNB. Alfred, God bless you, brother. So blessed to be kindred with you in mission. And all of you who are listening out there, lift your eyes from whence shall come our help. In spite of all of the junk around us, do not be distracted. God has no rival. He has no rival. He is supreme. He is over all. We declare it. And he wants to manifest that in our hearts, in our minds, and in our lives, in our marriages, and in our families. And in this very moment together with all of you, let's just say, Lord, we receive you. We receive it for the glory of your name, that your kingdom may come and your will be done. God bless you. Until next time.